Hey y'all, Josh here, Drum Set Confessional. Uh, I was just kind of skimming the stories and reading some of the stories that you can leave at drumsetconfessional.com. Uh, you can leave them anonymously and we implore you to, we beg you to come and share your stories. To me, I think this is the most powerful path that we've created. Um, I always say it, but it's really true. It's not a slogan, it's the truth. We are each other's people. I am your people and you are my people. And connecting like this is really, I mean, it's beyond cathartic. It's a really powerful thing. So I left a written reply to a story that was shared about, you know, the way that drugs really kind of mute the things that you're passionate about. And then the next story I read was, it's entitled, Normal People Get Addicted To. And this touches on something that is so important. Uh, we all know heroin's bad news. You don't do heroin, right? We all know that. Why would anyone do it? Um, I think the answer, I don't know that I know a, a junkie that didn't start with Oxycontin. It's just such a more kind of, it's, it's so less scary to, oh, take this little pill. Sure. Um, but really it had led me, I was addicted. By the time I tried heroin, I was heavily addicted to opiates. Um, and in this person's story, what they're getting at is when they say normal people get addicted to, and you don't, you know. You generally be like a well-adjusted, affable, kind person. And, oh, my God, I got addicted. Of course that happens. I know my own addiction was fueled by my ego. Of course I thought I was the exception to the rule. And I, I've speak, spoken previously about how, like, junkies are the masters of rationalization, where while I'm eating these pills, this this guy snorting this drug, what a scumbag. Well, now I'm snorting this drug, but that guy's shooting it. What a, what a scumbag. Well, now I'm shooting the drug, but... This guy's shooting the drug and he's doing this. What a, you know, we always get the emphasis off us, you know, but in terms of drugs in general, I thought I was the exception to the rule. That happened to other people. That's not going to happen to me uh, until, you, you know, the painful realization that you are. I mean, that's why we're each other's people, because I was just I'm one of many. And when it got me, pardon the crassness, but when it got me by the balls, it had me full on. Uh they make a really good point in this, in that, in that post about don't even try this drug. And man, again, you know, I, I was more equipped at seven years old than I was at 17 years old or certainly at 27 years old. Like I knew you don't do cocaine, you don't do heroin, but you know, they had never told me that how it's fun. And they did, they spoke about peer, peer pressure and you know, drugs at first can be this pleasurable thing. And you think like, oh, well, what's the harm in this? And it's almost kind of sexy. You're in this club and you and your friends share this thing. Not everybody else is hip to it. It, my life is living proof. I mean, it's a bona fide miracle that I can breathe air today. You know, I don't know that I should even be here. That's where it leads. You don't try it once. It's not worth it. Oh, God damn it. Nowadays, it is beyond not worth it. Oh, I've never done coke before. I got a little buzz on. Let me try one little tiny line. That's not going to hurt me. Well, we keep hearing the stories. It was fentanyl and they're gone. Gone from the earth. Can you imagine your mom or dad or your grandparents, whoever, getting that call, your brothers or your sisters, that you're gone? Especially the people that drugs didn't play like a big active role in their life. They decided to throw caution to the wind one night. That's the world we live in right now. It's not worth losing your life over. And that is what's happening all over the place. This fentanyl thing, it's an even more dangerous world than what I... I know if the, if I was using in this day and age, I, I wouldn't be around. Um, it would have killed me. But yeah, picking up a drug and trying a hard drug, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Um, please, hear our stories. It's so not worth it. But yeah, of course, normal people get addicted. I mean, hey, what's normal too, you know? And I get what the person's getting at. They're saying like, I'm well-adjusted. They said, I'm basically an optimist, passionate about music, no kind of, you know, I think a lot of people have this idea of addicts as these like severely broken people. And that's not good. That can't be them because they, they're not that. But I mean, we're all flawed and we're all broken in our own ways. That's life's journey, right? fixing the broken pieces and we've all been hurt. We've all hurt and we've all been hurt. But uh, I get, I agree with what they're getting at. I understand what they're getting at, but 
recognizing that we're all broken and we're all flawed. Yeah, like a lot of addicts I know, you know, came from really great homes and with, with loving parents. Uh, the softball team that I used to play on was called Ryan and it was named after a, a kid named Ryan Kelder who had a family that loved him, fiercely loved him. They loved him so much that after he died from a drug overdose, they not just sponsor softball teams. Oh, it stands for Raising Your Awareness About Narcotics, Ryan. You know, they're trying, just like we're trying with Drum Set Confessional, trying to do some good. Uh, I don't know the family extremely well. Obviously, I've met all of them. I think the dad has had his own experience um, that I think he, he's left behind years and years and years ago. Um, perhaps may, maybe AA, something like that. I don't know, and I don't want to speak too much on it, but you know, this kid was a sweet kid, kind of, you know, it's a really nice kid, like beloved. Everybody loved Ryan Kelder. Um, I remember they do the Ryan's, a Ryan's run. It's a 5k run. And I went and did it, came in third. Um, and hearing his sister speak, you know, years after Ryan had passed and hearing the pain still in their voices, it's just so clear to anyone how much they loved him. But yeah, like I think to the, to the kind of, I say uneducated, but I don't mean that in a pointed way to people that don't really haven't spent a lot of time thinking about this or don't don't need to think about this. Yeah, they think of addicts as these, you know, broken street people or something when it's everywhere. It isn't broken street people. We're all broken. It's everybody. And uh, yeah, we want to hear more stories at drumsetconfessional.com. I'm so bad at plugging things. You ever notice whenever I do it, I look down. I'm not a plugger, man. I don't know how to like shamelessly plug things. This is real. We want to really hear your stories at drumsetconfessional.com. Uh, it's a place to grow, listen, and learn for me. And I think it can be for you guys too. But any stories that you want to share. And again, if you're the sister or brother of an addict, that story is so worthy. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from anyone who has anything to say about drugs or alcohol, about abuse of substances in, in any way, shape or form. So not my most well-spoken reply, but I'm gonna post it anyway, because um, I think there's some worthy shit in there. All right, peace y'all.